podcast number 48. And in this podcast, we're just going to briefly talk about the idea of how your genome can respond to the environment in things that, in ways that appear random and, uh, and how that can affect phenotype. So uh, a lot of times when science fiction movies or just popular press talks about clones, uh, they get things wrong and that they think people are uh, two clones or two human clones would be exactly copies of each other. But in fact, we already have human clones in identical twins. Identical twins are formed by um, a zygote splitting uh, after fertilization so that the two organisms have exactly the same genome. And yet, uh, if you've known any identical twins, you can tell them apart. Um, sometimes it's more difficult to tell them apart. Sometimes it's easy to tell them apart. But they interact with their environment and their genome makes uh, changes uh, in how it expresses those genes throughout its life. An example of this is uh, the fingerprints of two twins. This is the same finger on twin A versus twin B. You can see they don't have the same fingerprint. And the fingerprint is produced as a series of random events as uh, in the cell pathway that would produce the skin. Um, some other examples. Here is a cloned cat. So here's the original cat. Took the nucleus uh, from a cell from this cat. Uh, took the the egg from this cat uh, and removed its nucleus and then replaced it with a, the nucleus from this cat. So then the uh, this cat, the surrogate mother, um, uh, f gestates that egg and has a kitten, uh, which is called copycat. And this cat here is an exact clone of this cat here. So same DNA. But if you notice, I mean, they look similar. Obviously, this is a kitten and this is a cat. But if you look at the pattern of hair, the, the colored pattern comes closer to the front of this cat than it does on this cat. And uh, this is a much more gray sort of color. And this more of an orangey sort of color. These are calico cats. Calico cats are females. The color pattern is from which of the two X chromosomes in the female gets inactivated. So both X chromosomes are not actively transcribing genes, uh, and only one of the two is transcribing a gene. And if it's X number one, you get one color uh, uh, in the skin cells that produce the hair on the cat, and if it's uh, X number two that's inactivated, you get a different color. And which one is inactivated is random. And so even though those these two cats are exact clones, uh, they're not going to look exactly the same. Okay, another example or another way to think about how variation can produce uh, how variation with an interaction with the environment can influence phenotype is with our old buddy, the lac promoter. So this is a variation on that where uh, they engineered the DNA of the bacterium so that uh, in the original lac promoter, you had lac Z, lac Y, and A. They replaced A with GFP, which is green fluorescent protein. So uh, normally, uh, the LAC I gene is making a repressor protein, which binds to the operator. And this would not be t transcribed and would be off. Um, OK. In the case where uh, LAC I is repressed, uh, LAC Z digests lactose that imports lactose and green fluorescent protein would be 
transcribed and then translated, making green fluorescent protein and making the bacterium glow. Okay, so um, you have an easy way of tracking it. So there is a the product of the LAC Y gene uh, is a permease that allows a substrate uh, to be imported into the um, bacterium, which is important for turning on green fluorescent protein. Okay, it 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 inhibits the inhibitor. The inhibitor uh, inhibits the inhibitor. Inhibitor. It's hard to say. Inhibits the inhibitor, uh, and therefore allows green fluorescent protein to be translated. So easy peasy uh, system in in order of interpreting the the data. In that in this case the if you don't see the bacterium glow, it's off. If you do see it, it's on. And uh, they used it in bacteria because bacteria reproduce clonally. Uh, each new bacterium is a clone of the old bacterium, exactly the same genetic material. So the researchers were interested in, well, how often would the LAC operon turn on just by chance, just randomly? And they gave it three different concentrations of this TMG substrate, which is uh, required to get into the cell uh, in order to cause the green fluorescent protein to come on, like here. Okay? So um, it should not matter how much TMG is around, uh, whether or not uh, the system turns on if it's turning on randomly, but you're going to see it does. Okay, if you take wild type cells, so these are um, bacteria that ha don't have any mutations in them. Uh, if you give a low concentration of this TMG substrate, which is need to turn on the cells, they don't turn on randomly. Uh, if you get a median concentration, two cells turn on randomly. And if you give a high concentration, almost all the cells turn on. Uh, and this is randomly, okay? Uh, this is just providing TMG on the outside of the cell, and you're counting on this operon flipping on randomly in order to see the green color. The green color is shown up uh, in terms of intensity. Um, this would be dark down here, and this would be light up here, green fluorescent protein. Okay, now... Um, In another uh, version of the mutant, or uh, a mutant version of these bacteria, one that tends to make mistakes uh, when it copies its DNA, um, that still at low concentration of TMG, it's off. But now at medium concentration, uh, there's a lot more cells that randomly turn on. And then at high concentration, they turn on just like wild type. So um, depending on how many mistakes are made when you copy your genome, uh, that can affect how often you randomly turn something on, and also the concentration of the substrate you need. So um, uh, some uh, results in tabular form here, OK? So the phenotype uh, is, is it glowing green or not? And the genotype is what's happening in the uh, green fluorescent protein. So actually, I made a mistake here. This mutation here is in the RNA polymerase, not in the DNA polymerase. There's an RNA polymerase that makes mistakes when it's transcribing the RNA. So this is after this uh, black operon is turned on and it's transcribing RNA. Uh, if it makes a lot of mistakes in transcribing that RNA, is that more likely you're going to see a green glow or not? Okay. So in wild type cells, um, they have they make mistakes too, but it's pretty low uh, mistake rate, uh, about two mistakes per million base pairs. So that's fairly low rate uh, of mistakes, and they switch um, from off to on. Uh, about uh, 0 
0.26 or sorry 0 0.0026 uh, times um, uh, per unit time okay so a relatively uh, low rate you have to watch them for a while um, before you see a change and this is all by the way this is all at this concentration here six micromolar okay um, and they have an overall switch in phenotype uh, frequency 1% of the time. And then looking at another strain, uh, they have a higher uh, rate of change, significantly higher rate of change. The strain that we looked at before, which is a mutant RNA polymerase, sorry, not the DNA, but the RNA polymerase, um, and you see a much higher rate of phenotype swain change. And then if uh, this is a true change in their DNA polymerase, so this is the copying their DNA, the DNA is making mistakes uh, in this mutant, and it has a pretty low uh, rate of change. So most of the, or the biggest rate of change uh, that you see uh, in terms of how likely is it going to randomly turn on has to do with how good is your RNA polymerase, not necessarily um, how uh, true is your genotype to the wild type. So this this mutant right here uh, makes mistakes more often than wild type when it's copying its DNA, and it doesn't seem to matter in terms of how often it turns on the green fluorescent protein. But this one here, uh, which makes a mistake in RNA polymerase, that makes a big difference. So the question, is the change of phenotype caused by a change in genotype? Uh, not really, um, unless you consider the, the RNA polymerase as part of the genotype. Okay, those are genetic changes, epigenetic changes. So these are changes in the DNA or the RNA that are not due to changes in DNA sequence. So this may be the DNA got modified, it got a chemical group added onto it, um, that sort of thing. Not, uh, not due to switching out an A for a T, for example.